everyone, it's Sebastian Torres. A lot of people have been using Photoshop's generative fill lately. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, then there is another option that you can use, and that is the Krita AI Diffusion add-on. This add-on actually uses Comfy UI within Krita. Now, it's not a full set of nodes like you have in Comfy UI, but it'll actually make it very useful, kind of like generative fill in Photoshop. I'm going to be using it to create map paintings. In Blender, we'll be projecting this onto simple geometry. And once we have that, we'll be able to actually create moving scenes. What is a matte painting? A matte painting is generally a painting created either digitally or by hand by an artist in order to convey a location that doesn't exist in the real world. Now, a lot of people use CGI these days, but historically in Hollywood, they would just use paintings. What are the actual benefits of using matte painting as opposed to generating or creating full scenes? You save a lot of time in both the creation side of it and the rendering side of it because you don't have to actually create the entire city. Usually if you try and get this amount of detail into a 3D image, it would take a long time because you would have to paint every single crevice. Whereas if we just have a photo and we project it onto a 3D geometry, now there are some limitations to this obviously. For instance, from behind, it won't look as great. You can also see we're projecting from the camera view so if you are going to do something like this you'd probably need pictures of the tops of these buildings as well and the backs you can kind of get away with it because you can kind of just project the front onto the back but the good thing is then you save a lot of rendering time because from the camera's point of view it looks amazing another benefit of doing this is that we turn an image into an actual moving camera so if you have a look here if i turn on the camera to view i can actually move now obviously i've only got the one building done now but I can actually move the camera. We have some limitations on how much we can move it, but it's actually pretty decent. So if you haven't installed Krita, go to krita.org and then that way you'll be able to download the latest version. Once we have that installed, we're gonna need the Krita AI Diffusion add-on. So if you come down here into the getting started, you'll see that you have the process for installation and it's pretty easy to follow. Once it's fully installed, you'll see that we have this new panel here called the AI Image Generation. Now in the settings and connection, you'll see that you have all of these options to download. You can add your own models to it, but I find that these are pretty good for what I need. So usually what I need is to create something cinematic. So you've got the options here of cinematic photo and cinematic photo Excel. So that's a 1.5 and the SD Excel models. And you've also got the digital artwork. So this is more of a stylized version of it. You'll see that we have our own prompt that we can add to it. So let's say for instance, we want to create a cinematic SDXL. So let's say we want to create a snowy forest and let's try and generate that. Now, if we don't give it too much instruction, it'll pretty much go wild with whatever it wants to create. The benefit of using this is that we actually do have some control nets that we can later use in order to control the image further. Now, depending on the size of the image you create, it will take a little bit longer. For instance, I've created a 2048 by 2048 image here. You can create a 1024 by 1024, which is a native SDXL image, but unfortunately we're gonna have to upscale this anyways later on because a 1024 by 1024 image for a map painting just isn't enough detail. That's actually pretty good. So now, let's say we wanted to animate this, right? We want to go through this forest just slightly. We don't. We want to do a bit of a push in on this image. And in order to get started, we're actually going to need another piece of software called FSpire. I'm going to be leaving the links to all these in the description, so make sure you check down there. Open an image. In our case, it'll be our snow forest. Uh, the good thing about it is that we kind of have a vanishing point. Now I've set the first vanishing point to Z axis. So that's gonna be our trees. Now these trees aren't very straight, but it's fine. It'll work for what we need. And then we're gonna need this Y as our distance. So let's go roughly along our vanishing point. And you see that it actually lines up with the trees pretty well. Now the only reason why I need this is just to line up the camera so in Blender it's a little bit easier. So let's save this out. So once we're in Blender we can grab everything and delete it and we'll have to install the FSpy add-on. So once again the FSpy add-on it's pretty simple to install and you'll see that it's actually aligned everything according to the ground plane so we can actually see these lines of our grid, our floor grid 
aligning with the image. What we're going to do is we're actually going to create the floor plane. So let's create the floor plane and we'll edit that. And we just need some geometry to project our image onto. That should be fine. And then we'll just extrude this up. Now, obviously we can go into a lot more detail with this if we want, but I'm just going to show you how to do something simple, just a simple camera movement. And then we'll fill in the back. And you'll see that we've filled in the entire camera space. And what we need to do now is actually add more geometry, but we're not going to do it baked in. We're going to create a subdivision modifier and just boost this up to four. And from there, what we can do is actually go to edit mode, select it all, and then project from view. And then we'll come in here and create a material, put this as black emission. We set it to one and then we'll create an image texture, load up our snowy forest and we go into the render view. So I added some more geometry just so it has a little bit more to play with. The more geometry you have, the better off you are. Grab the camera, we'll turn off the background image. And sometimes you're gonna have issues where on the edging it kind of flakes a little bit. That's fine, because we actually want to be able to create a little bit of parallax in the image. We'll return the camera to where it was originally and we'll give it a couple of subdivs there. So now, when we project it again, set it to smooth. So let's go with 1920 by 1080 which is a standard cinematic aspect ratio and you'll see that we can actually reposition our camera there are certain bits and pieces that kind of break apart but it gives us a little bit more option now the reason why i set it to emission as opposed to the other way if we go into cycles we'll set it to gpu now obviously this just depends on what kind of hardware you have uh, let's set the noise threshold to 0.9 we'll set this to 512 color management will set that over to standard and you should notice that the color is a little bit more vibrant when it's on standard so let's add a monkey you notice that the monkey is kind of taking on the colors of the background but let's actually make it a little bit more metallic get rid of the roughness and we'll subdivide it you can kind of see the sky reflecting and also the the snow you can see the darkness coming in from the sides from the trees now back in creed i've actually created this line art drawing and it, as you can see it's pretty rough and i just knew that i wanted a road going around kind of this side so just to give it the idea that there's a road there i even added the little lines in the middle it looks pretty shocking i know and then i also wanted a sort of a hill here and a little bit in the front and then just mountains in the distance so you can see my actual prompt is sandy desert with a dirt road mountains in the back and a blue sky now it gave me a couple of options so as you can see not all of them are winners and so i generated a few until i got here and you'll see that it took my idea you can kind of paint out the sky and the background and everything in blender but Personally, I believe it's probably better to do it in here. So I've actually separated the middle ground and then I've got the background. Now, as you can see, I've recreated the entire setting within Blender. And if we actually look at this, you'll see that it's just two pieces of geometry. It's actually quite simple. This one has a little bit extra geometry because I needed to kind of mold it to the actual picture. So as you can see here, the actual image is projected onto it, but it doesn't need to reach the end. But as you can see, the rest of this doesn't really need any texture. The benefit of all this is you can actually see we've added movement. Now I've actually gone a little bit overboard when it comes to the movement in this shot and purely it's because I knew most of it would be covered with the car driving through it or distracting you with the car going through it. But usually you wouldn't be creating such an extreme sort of movement. Usually it's either a side, slight side to side or like, you know, tracking forward or backwards just to give the image the look of par like it's got parallax, like it's actually a moving image. You could go into a lot more detail when it comes to actually creating the geometry. For instance, this ridge, I could have gone into a little bit more detail with it, created the actual ridge, I guess. And you'll see that she actually takes on the color of the scene. The only thing she won't take on because it's a little bit far away is actually the color of the sky but found an easy way to get around that actually we we'll go into emission create a new emission node and then we'll actually select that color so we're going to need to bring this back and we'll reduce the saturation some so it can kind of act as our sky 
And the beautiful thing is that we get that nice soft bounce from the sand below. So I hope this helps you understand how map paintings work, also how to create them using Krita, how to put this to good use. Because I feel like we're concentrating on the next big thing every single time when it comes to AI. We're not concentrating on what we can improve. Let's say we want to use AI to improve our backgrounds in movies. This is the way to do it. You know, we have this new technique now that we can use. We do not need to specifically just use a painter or just use Photoshop in order to create these backgrounds. I really think that this is actually going to help revolutionize the movie making or even television making industry. As a VFX artist, I don't see this as a threat. I actually see this as a step forward for us because this way we're able to create new things every single day. We're able to move a little bit faster. So if we have an idea for, let's say a short film and it's set in a desert and we want to create that, we don't have to go out into the desert and shoot it. You can just shoot it in your backyard. Like they did with the Dune movies, if you've got a brown fence and you want to use that as your green screen or brown screen, I guess it's like a sandy screen that they use, you can just use that as your background. And then that way, when you cut yourself out of the background, you don't have this weird blue screen or green screen like ridges all around you. Like there's so many ways that we can, as independent filmmakers, make AI work for us as opposed to being afraid of what it could actually do for us. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on using AI for anything like VFX or filmmaking. If you're a filmmaker, I'd like to know, are you using AI for your work? Do you intend to use AI for your work? You know, you now we've got Sora coming out. You've also got Stable Diffusion, Pika Labs. You've got Runway ML. All of them are giving us all these video options and also 2D options. For instance, this background is 2D. It doesn't have to be specifically video. We can create the video using these assets. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, consider checking out my Patreon. I've only been on there for a couple of months, but it's actually been great because I've been able to connect with you guys directly and give you much longer videos and a lot more content. So. The majority of the things that I create for these tutorials, you'll be able to download from my Patreon. That way you'll be able to play around with them and see how they function, break them apart and use them for your own things. If you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and click the notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I create a new video and you'll learn so much more. I want to give a big shout out to my Patreons. You guys are amazing. I couldn't do this without you. Now, if you enjoyed this video, check out one of these next ones. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that you guys are interested in my channel and it means I love you a little bit more. I'll catch you guys next time.